They say t of x is a complete statistic, or f of x and theta, if the expected value of h of t equals 0 for all theta implies the probability that h of t equals 0 equals 1 for all theta. That makes no sense to me on the face of it. We have to dig in to decipher what they're actually trying to say. So x is the data, t of x is a statistic. Suppose, for example, e of t of x is k times the actual theta. Then if you divide it by k, you would have the expected value of this function is theta. So if t is a statistic, u of t would be an unbiased statistic for theta. Here's the question that completeness is trying to answer. Is u unique? Suppose e of u1 of t is theta and e of u2 of t is also theta. Then e of u1 of t minus u2 of t would have to be 0. Let h be that function, u1 of t minus u2 of t. e of h of t might vary with theta, but if the only function of h that satisfies e of h equals 0 for all theta is the function h equals 0, then u1 of t has to equal u2 of t, and so u is unique. So this definition says that if the average of h is 0, then h has to be 0. They're saying probability of that being 0 is 1. It'll count for cases like this, where you have a function that is 0 except at 1 or a small number of points. So h of t is 0 almost everywhere. That means the probability that h is 0 would be 1. So that's why they're making that distinction instead of just saying h of t equals 0. They're allowing for exceptional points.